Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. I'm so excited today to be talking all about the bold type. We have Katie Stevens, Aisha D, and Megan Fahey joining us today. Um, and Aisha, I actually wanted to start with a question for you in some of the relationship that we've been able to see this season with Kat, because he's always been in a position throughout the show up until now where he's been in a job that really crosses over into her personal life. And it recently has been the first time that we've had the opportunity to explore what does that look like when she has a job that she just goes to and comes home from and how she figures out that new balance. And so how did you want to approach thinking about her relationship to work in a very different way through your performance? Yeah, I think, I think Kat's journey has been very humbling, I mean, especially as someone who comes from so much privilege. I think this new chapter in her life, uh, you know, working at a bar, working for TV, was probably the first time she's ever experienced that. Um, and I think it's really important. I think it kind of ties into her kind of overall uh, journey. And uh, I think it really motivates her to start using her to, um, to dismantle the systems and mechanisms that have kept people down for so long. Um, you know, it, instead of just being privileged, she's learning how to like use that as a weapon against you know, all the things that try to keep us down. And then Katie, with Jane, one of the things that's been really great to watch in terms of your story arcs is the way that she's processing a lot of the BRCA treatment. And as a character overall, she very frequently is someone who is a little bit more A-type and really likes to create some sort of system and order to everything. And this is obviously so far out of her control that it's a very different situation. So how have you really thought about the emotional impact, the emotional side of and how you really want her to try and create some sort of order and system throughout all of this for herself. Honestly, one of the things that I talked about with the writers about this season was how I wanted to see Jane let go of some of that control. I think sometimes when you are, you know, I know personally, I am also a type A type personality, maybe not as extreme as Jane, but I think that like there is a, a time in your life or when there are specific situations that happen in your life that you realize there's so much in life that's out of your control and, and it's a waste of energy and um, of, of your own resources to try to figure out a way to be in control. And so for me, it was important to watch Jane now at this point in her journey and in her life to let go a little bit and find, you know, confidence in where she's at, find confidence in her skin and her body, um, in the decisions that she made and, and to kind of move forward with, with that energy, because I think that that's so important. I never wanted to be part of a story, especially telling the story of Jane discovering her BRCA gene mutation. I never wanted to be part of a story about, you know, her constantly being in her head or, you know, barely keeping her head above water because this thing happened to her. Like I always want this, I wanted the story to be like, here's somebody who learned something about themselves and decided to take control in a way of having all of the information to make the proper decision. And then through all the hardships of that process, learning more about herself so that she could be the best version of herself. And then Megan, I wanted to talk about that really pivotal scene that you had at the end of last season between Sutton and Richard as they're having a conversation about their future because it was such a beautifully constructed emotional scene which really spoke to their entire history and relationship. And, and I know that the two of you did a lot of almost like theatrical blocking to it because it was such an extensive element of the script and was several pages long with each other. And so how was that a completely different experience for the two of you to really put together the choreography, the blocking, the emotional layer in that scene and bring that performance to screen in the way that you both did? I mean, it was a really unique experience. It felt very play-like to me. Um, and I think, you know, I started acting in theater and I haven't done it really at all since we started shooting the bold type. And one of the things that I love most about theater is that it's just happening in real time. And there's, you know, a lot of energy that doesn't ever have to get cut. Um, and sometimes when you're doing TV, that can be something that, you know, you, you struggle with, especially when you're doing emotionally driven things. It's really a skill to be able to 
get yourself to a place and then they call cut and they're setting up a different thing. And it's like, you wait 20 minutes and then you have to get back into it. Like it's, it's not simple. And there was still obviously some of that when we shot that scene, but because we had rehearsed it so much beforehand and we knew what the setups were and the shots were, we were able to get through a lot of it um, sort of like in this cohesive fluid way, which I think really, really helped us um, performance wise. And it was also just, fun to get to do it like that so it was great and overall for all of you how do you feel like your time on the show has really created an evol evolution in terms of your stylistic approach and your craft as actors in the way that you do uh -huh. come together and put scenes together and the conversations you have the way that you rehearse and think about scenes to then taking on camera that's a good question <laughs> um Go, you go, Aish. No, I mean, I was probably just going to talk in circles. So you go. <laughs> we all do that. I was about to do that, too. Um, I would just, I mean, I guess I would just say it, it's, a, it's a gift to be on a show for so long to where you have such a rapport with the actors that you're working with and that you have an understanding of how you work together, especially since we had to film during COVID times. So like our rehearsals during these scenes this season were with masks and visors. And the only time that we were without those was when we were rolling and the cameras were finally on. So with, with that, I'm really grateful that I know the people behind the masks and I, I know our rapport with each other. Um, but I feel like every single day that I got to work with, you know, these two women, I was, learning so much more about being an actor, about being present. And, you know, I think that I look at them and admire them in, in their craft because, you know, there are things that they do that I can't do in the way that they do. And so, you know, I think that we all learn from each other with working together and, and have all come out of this better versions of ourselves not only as actors in our craft, but also as people. I know that's so cheesy, but I mean it. <laughs> Same for the two of you as well. Um, I was just gonna say like, I don't think I've ever stepped onto a set that feels like the last set that I was on. Um, every set is so different in like vibe and depending on who's directing, they're gonna rehearse it in a different way, even from episode to episode for us. Um, and I think like the biggest takeaway for me is just like learning how to be really flexible and um, malleable and coming onto a set and being like, well, I don't know what it's going to be yet. And figure it out when we're there because, uh, you know, on the bull type, we, we would get so many um, uh, new revisions that it was like, it almost like was not helpful to learn the lines too well because it was like they'll most likely change by the time we get to set. So it was a really big lesson in how to kind of be okay with things changing and being too married to an idea of a thing and being open to the fact that it might change in the moment. Um, and, you know, I love that I got to do that with these two and hopefully kind of take some of the confidence that comes with that into the future um because i know for a fact that katie and megan are gonna go on and do like really incredible things and, you know i hope we all go and do that when we grow up one day <laughs> one of the aspects that's been really beautiful to watch about this friendship that the three of you can have constructed on screen as well is that the further we go into the show the more opportunity there is to all bring a lot of non-verbal communication uh -huh verbal intimacy into that dynamic. and is that something where it's it's just second nature because these characters are part of the fabric of you or do you think a little bit what some of those quiet nuances are in the way that they speak to each other between the dialogue I think the line between like Aisha and Kat and Katie and Jane and Sutton and Megan is like very blurry at this point um because yeah. I mean, we wrapped the show and I, in my mind, I was like, cool, I'm going to go back to my life. And then I got back here and I was like, I don't know if I have a life. Um, <laughs> so, like our lives have been um, this for so long. But I think like, 
I think that's what's so beautiful about it. Like, the, the cameras are capturing a real thing that's happening between us. Like we're really so delirious at 2 a.m. on set and we're just trying to make each other laugh because that's the way we get through it. And I don't know, How, what do you guys think? I feel like that's where a lot of it is born from. I mean, I also, sorry, you go ahead, Nick. No. Yes. yes. No. No. <laughs> I think that I think that it is though just even in terms of on screen our reactions to each other like when when somebody's emotional or they're crying or you know I feel like our reactions to one another are also like the way we react to one another when we're going through something in real life like Asia said I feel like not even just because we've been working together for so long but I think that the reason that the friend on screen has worked is because it's similar to our real relationship in real life. Like if, if we didn't like each other in real life, I don't think the show would have been as successful because I think a lot of the magic that's brought to the friendship is the fact that we're just kind of being the way that we are in real life with each other. Is that the same for you, Megan? <laughs> no, I don't feel that way. <laughs> Um, no, I was just going to say, like, I, I, sometimes I watch the show and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe they left that in there. Like we were just being clowns, but I think that, um, it doesn't really matter if, if the, if it's like a, if it's weird or the sense of humor is too specific to like an inside joke or something that we're having, it still just reads as authentic to the audience. And I think that that's what people gravitate towards more than anything else, you know? So it's yeah. cool that we're given the space to kind of go to those places together on camera because it really does, I think, improve um, the show overall. And, you know, jumping off the back that, at the point that Katie was making before about conversations with the writers about Jane's storyline with the BRCA gene mutation, it's always sounded like a really collaborative environment, even from the pilot in them always conversations with you about character. And when you think back to it, when you started on the show, what were some of the very early things that you feel that you were able to bring to the table with your characters through the fact that that was the environment that you were coming into with this series and this team? <laughs> I would say even just like as subtle as in the beginning, um, when we were still kind of finding the rhythm of the show, I think um, we got a lot of uh, uh, green light. <laughs> to improvise stuff. And that's not always the case. There are a lot of shows that you're on where like the script is the script, you stick to it, you don't, you know, go off. And I think some of the writers were trying to like figure out our voices at that point. And the way that we helped them figure that out was they gave us the freedom to improvise in certain places. And a lot of those improvisational moments were the things that were really special. Um, and you know, from that point on, there were more conversations about story and, you know, us getting to know our characters being like, I feel like, you know, Jane would do this or, you know, Kat would do this or Sutton would do this. And um, I think that not often that you're on a show where like the writers actually care about the actors' opinions and, and voices in terms of where the characters go. And we were, we were given that, um, which is something that I will, you know, hopefully take with me. Um, and was a learning experience for me moving forward in my career. Have there been any moments for any of you where some details that have come up in scripts later on have been a little bit contradictory to something that you maybe developed in your own head as part of their backstory when you were initially developing them as characters, even if it's just something as simple as a detail about their factory or previous relationship? I think Kat's name is one that's really funny to me. Everyone's always been like, Cat is short for Catherine. And I'm like, no. People have called me Katrina, Katarina, Catherine. <laughs> At this point, I like that it doesn't make sense. And my favorite moments on the show are the ones that don't quite track. I just think it's fun because we're having fun. We're having the best time. It's campy and we're here to have a good time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And Megan, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of Sutton's journey in terms of her self-confidence, because 
you know, I think if we take the relationship with Richard, that's a great example of her knowing exactly what she wants at the point and not being afraid to really by her convictions, even though it's so difficult to do so. And it's been really wonderful over the seasons, watching her evolution, finding the confidence to go after what she wants for herself. And even if she goes down a journey of, I want to be a fashion designer and then realize it's the wrong path, she has no trouble veering onto a different direction for herself. And so I was interested in, in how you've really worked to construct that journey and gradually built that into her more and more as the seasons progress. Well, I think a lot of um, Sutton's ability to do that is because she has such a great support system, not in just the girls, but also in Oliver and Richard too. He's very, he's a man in her life who's like really, really supportive of her having a career and having a career the way that she wants to have a career. Um, but yeah, I mean, watching Sutton evolve like that has been really special for me because that's something that I think a lot of women obviously struggle with, but, um, it's definitely something that I have struggled with. And so I was kind of going through those things with her in my own way. And, um, and so I think that's also something that's really cool about the show is that it, we're, we are on it and we're not immune to it. Like I've learned so many th things through what's happened to Sutton, what's happened to Jane, what's happened to Kat. Um, and I think that's so beautiful. Aisha, I also wanted to talk to you about Kat when it comes to her romantic interests, you know, particularly when we look at it in the aftermath of her relationship with Adina, because one of the things that's really lovely to watch is how she doesn't allow anything to sit with her as a fact. She really uses it to go into the next situation with confidence, having learned from the experience. And so as you progress through the show and you go into different romantic interests for her as a character, how do you always really think consciously about the previous experience she's had and who she's going to be in this next relationship because of the experiences. You know, I, I actually, I kind of try to think about uh, that, you know, the whole thing holistically kind of saying like your experiences with your romantic partners are influenced by your experience in the workplace. And, you know, Kat also like lost her job last season and was, waiting tables for the first time and uh, I, I think before that was coming from such a place of privilege that she didn't have any idea what it would be like to maybe live paycheck to paycheck um, and I, I don't know I think that was a really important kind of thing for her to go through and I also feel like that particular experience in losing her job at Scarlet especially like in these episodes we see how that her relationship with Scarlett and work and wanting to commit to work kind of echoes her experience romantically and who she wants to be with and ability to commit in that way too so uh I think it all kind of goes hand in hand and like each thing influences it not just in terms of relationships but um everything and then Katie, with the evolution of Jane in terms of her career and getting the opportunity to really see her take over her own vertical, decide who she's going to be as a manager of other people. Um, what are the types of conversations that you either have to write with yourself in thinking about who she's going to be as she progresses in her career? And in particular, looking to influential women like Jacqueline and what she's learned from them that she wants to absorb it. Myself. I mean, I think that it was a lot of conversations with, um, you know, the writers in terms of, uh, you know, for me, it was Im important to see the relationship that that Jane has with the idea of Jacqueline and um, the fact that that is her mentor. But how does she pave her own way? How does she become her own boss? And you know, not put the pressure on herself to be exactly like Jacqueline. Like what does a Jacqueline position look like on Jane? And so it was important for me that um, Jane kind of go through that this season and trying to figure that out for herself. Um, because I think that oftentimes when we have a mentor um, like Jane has in Jacqueline, it's easy to put the pressure on yourself of like, well, this person's so incredible. I have to be exactly like them. Um, when, you know, you can take tips and, and things about that person, but also bring yourself to it because there's also a reason why you're special. And so 
um, I'm excited for people to see Jane's journey within that, figuring that out for herself. I was interested for all of you in terms of some of the external voices outside of the cast and crew and who they've been really influential in a lot of the details when it comes to research elements for your characters. For example, I know that there've been doctors that have come in and consulted for the BRCA gene mutation story for Jane and was interested if there are other spaces throughout the show for any of you where there have been outside consultants or professionals who've come in and really helped to shape a story for you. I would say my husband. Um, my, my husband uh, lost his mother when he was 15 from breast cancer, like Jane had. And there were a lot of times when I've consulted him about what that experience was like, because it's unimaginable what that experience must be for someone um, who hasn't gone through it. And he's always been so lovely to share in those things. And, you know, one of the scenes that I had um, when Jane is talking with Dr. Ben about why she doesn't believe in God, um, that was actually f that whole monologue that I said was actually a verbatim conversation that uh, my husband and I had about you know why he doesn't really have faith and um you know i didn't want jane to just be this person who just like you know was judgy about people believing in something or having a faith and um i feel like when you go through something as tragic as that like there are reasons why that happens yes. um and so my husband was really helpful in that and supportive and lovely and in, in allowing me to ask him the questions and kind of have his take on things. So um, I'm super grateful that I had that part that was something that was unbiased, not a part of the show, but was able to like help me in that. Have either of you had anyone from outside of the, the show who's really been beneficial to you in any of your stories? Oh, from outside of the show, I would say like, weirdly, like there's usually someone in the crew that's like had an experience. I know they were asking for like outside of the show, but I think like, I don't know, uh, my makeup artist, Megan and I share a makeup artist and my makeup artist has been like a huge source for me over the years. I like certain things, and she's just the coolest person in the world. So she's been through it all and like uh, had lots of insight other than that, I think, I don't know, I talk to my friends a lot. I just like, I'm like, how do you feel about this? You know, you know what a yoni egg is? Like, I want to know, because, you know, I'm finding out about these things too. Like, that's what's beautiful about the show is it starts all of these conversations that I don't think we would otherwise have. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to talk about the costumes because the costumes in the show aren't just something which tell us who these characters are or are representative of the fact that there's a fashion element to the magazine they really track a lot of emotional trajectories and journeys. And when we look at the outfits that you've all been wearing throughout the show, they're so different and so evolved when we look now versus the beginning. And it really tracks with who they have become as women as we've watched them grow. And so how does, does the costume design and the collaboration with that department really help you in building out the emotional journey for your characters as well in an exterior way? Anyone? fashion lady well i mean i i i have no sense of fashion at all i i sort of just let them put me in whatever they want um and i've i've honestly had a lot of fun with that i i mean i think sutton has worn some like some real interesting things um through the years and i just think it's fun i mean we're so lucky that we're on a show where we get to wear such interesting, crazy stuff, you know, um, and talk about all the things that we get to talk about. And, you know, like it's, it's, I think it's a rare hybrid of a show that's like beautiful makeup and clothing, but also like talking about real stuff. So I, I mean, I don't even think that's an answer to your question, but, but for me, I just always kind of went with it because I felt like Sutton knew exactly what she was doing all the time and I don't. So I just had to trust that someone else did, you know, that's not a part of the character I could connect to really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had some like, you know, this season 
um, there were some notes that I was getting on costumes that were saying that they felt like it was a little too sexy for Jane. Things that in my opinion didn't feel sexy. You know, we get net, like network notes and things like that. And I had like a really nice collaborative conversation where I was able to kind of speak my piece about it and, you know, was, was heard about it. And, you know, for me, I just feel like we've been telling this story since the beginning and like, Megan was saying with getting to wear beautiful clothes and beautiful makeup and talk about real things. I think that like, that's what the world needs to see is just because somebody cares about fashion and clothes doesn't mean that they can't also be a boss and be somebody who is taken seriously and talks about and has an opinion about serious issues. And especially for me, I wanted the evolution of Jane's wardrobe this season to show that she after going through everything that she's gone through after getting reconstructive surgery and, and seeing her be in a place where she wasn't fully comfortable in her skin anymore. I wanted this to be the season where we see her in full confidence in her body and her skin in who she is and the decisions that she wants to make. And a lot of that, I feel like we reflect who we are day to day with the clothes that we wear. And um, so I feel like clothes were really important to telling these stories because I think clothes tell a story in and of themselves. And then lastly, I wanted to ask you all about um, working with different directors on the series, because at this point in the show, you know, it reaches that point where you have directors who've done previous episodes with you. They know how you all work together, collaborative as cast, and you have a certain community. Um, and then you also recently had the opportunity to be directed hard in for an episode as well and so how does that really change and evolve the style on set when it's a director who's so familiar with you all at this point yeah it's a unique experience I've never had that experience um you know being directed by someone who's also a castmate so it was pretty cool I think also like we have such an amazing crew um and they really sort of helped facilitate the whole thing in a way that felt very seamless and great. And, you know, Melora's a really talented actor. So she, she gave some pretty helpful, like actor notes, you know, it's funny the difference between somebody who is an actor and who gets sometimes how it is processed in you. Um, But yeah, our crew is just like, they were just the best. They just totally like, I always felt so, carried by them in mo- in so many moments throughout st- all of the seasons. <laughs> and we had some new directors that came in this season. Um, there was uh, Yoko, I'm going to butcher her last name, Yoko Ok. How do you say it? Okamura. Okamura. Yeah, I was going to say that, but I didn't want to be wrong. I might. Um, it would be on me. <laughs> she's fantastic. Um, and, you know, we were like I think one of her first directing jobs and like I would not have known that she was new. She was incredible. Um, oh, did we lose Megan? Nope, there she is. Hi. What a thrill. Who knows when it'll die? <laughs> um, but I also think that it's like always when not only like Megan said, you have somebody that's an actor with you, but also it's fun whenever we have directors from previous seasons who have come back Um, And April Winnie uh, directed our final two episodes and it was nice to kind of close out the show with somebody familiar. Well, you all bring such fantastic performances to the screen in this show um, and really, really appreciate you all taking the time for this conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Meet you. You asked very thoughtful questions. We appreciate you. Truly.